Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. Since the very beginning, Disney has always looked for ways to stay relevant with modern audiences. As the canon of Disney films keep on growing, a lot of the beloved characters from these stories are incorporated into the theme parks, sometimes as brand new additions or by overlaying an old favorite. Over the decades, incorporating Disney IPs into old rides have been huge hits, and some have been considered massive failures. So let's dive into the defunct history of some Disney classics at Disneyland and Walt Disney World as we count down the top 5 failed and successful Disney ride overlays. Number 5 Back in 1959, Disneyland debuted the Submarine Voyage as part of an extensive expansion of Tomorrowland. The Submarine Voyage was a headliner e-ticket attraction, and everyone who visited Disneyland wanted to experience the subs. It took you down to the ocean floor as you got the chance to see aquatic animatronic creatures, shipwrecks, ancient ruins, and the famous sea serpent, all while in a theme park. Well, as the years went on, Disneyland began to neglect the ride in terms of maintenance. The lagoon had major cracks and it started to cost a lot to operate. The attraction's popularity was dwindling, and this was during the unfortunate cost-cutting period at Disneyland. So, in a statement to the press in 1998, former Disneyland president Paul Pressler said, The submarine voyage has served Disneyland and our guests proudly for nearly 40 years, but we know it isn't relevant today as it once was. The attraction officially closed on September 7th, 1998, and instead of demolishing the area, Imagineer Tony Baxter convinced Pressler to keep it intact so he could find a way to repurpose the attraction. As the lagoon sat empty, Imagineers brainstormed ways to retheme the subs. They began to look at the upcoming animated feature film Atlantis The Lost Empire. It was said Imagineers went as far as doing tests in the subs, but when Atlantis debuted in 2001, it wasn't the smash hit Disney was hoping for. Imagineers scrapped the idea and it was back to the drawing board. It wasn't until 2003 when a little film called Finding Nemo opened to staggering box office numbers. Tony Baxter knew this was it. Finding Nemo would be the saving grace of the submarine voyage. In 2005, Disney officially announced they would become the Finding Nemo submarine voyage, and they went right to work on the transformation. This included replacing all the rocks and coral in the outdoor lagoon, as well as removing the diesel engines from the subs and replacing them with electric ones. Imagineers did reuse as much as possible in the interior of the dark ride portion, but also constructed brand new scenic elements. This allowed Imagineers to use projection technology to place the animated Finding Nemo characters in the water. This IP translated perfectly into the submarine voyage, and when the attraction officially opened on June 11th, 2007, it was a hit. Finding Nemo gave Imagineers a chance to bring Walt's precious subs back to life, in a way to stay relevant with modern audiences. We've enjoyed having you aboard on this adventurous voyage. Thanks for joining us, and have a top day. Number 4 the Enchanted Tiki Room opened at Disneyland in 1963, and it marked the debut of audio animatronics in the theme park. Audiences at the time had never seen anything like this, and they adored this Polynesian musical adventure. Well, when it came time to build Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom, some of the most popular attractions from California were built in Florida, and this included the Tiki Room. Disney decided to call the Magic Kingdom attraction the Tropical Serenade, and although the name was different, it was pretty much a carbon copy of the Enchanted Tiki Room at Disneyland. I mean, why mess with a classic that's already popular with guests, right? Well, now let's fast forward to 1997. Disney animation in the 90s was met with what we now know as the Disney Renaissance era, and with that, many of the popular 90s IPs were incorporated into the theme parks. With this synergy in mind, Disney decided to close the Tropical Serenade in September of 1997 to transform it into the Enchanted Tiki Room under new management. 
The transformation took seven months, and when the attraction reopened in April of 1998, it now starred Zazu and Iago in addition to the original birds. This change was done in an effort to make the attraction more relevant with 90s audiences. And since The Lion King and Aladdin were such big hits, incorporating these IPs into the Tiki Room would mean a guaranteed success, right? Well, not exactly. Many guests were not too happy with this strange adaptation of this Disney classic, some saying Disney ruined the attraction. The Tiki Room lost the timeless charm and tranquility, and it was traded in for 10 minutes of mayhem featuring Iago squawking. Obviously you first don't know who we are. It featured odd covers of pop songs, as well as a parody of Friend Like Me from Aladdin. Oh my gosh. It was just a very disjointed effort of merging the old with new. Now the story and execution may have been a mess, but the highlights were definitely the new animatronics. This included the Tiki goddess Aoa, who was awoken by Iago insulting the Tiki gods. But impressive animatronics can only take an attraction so far. Well, on January 12th, 2011, Iago was squawking like he normally does when a fire broke out at the Tiki Room around 5.30 p.m. It was a small fire that's said to have started in the attic of the attraction and was thankfully stopped by the building's fire sprinklers. Immediately after the incident, the attraction closed, and there was no word on reopening. After the fire, the attraction had some water damage from the sprinklers, which included damage to the first Iago animatronic. The attraction was closed for months when Disney finally announced in August of 2011 that it would be reopening as Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. Iago and Zazu got the boot as Disney restored the attraction back to its original glory, with some slight modifications made to adjust for time. If it wasn't for that little fire in 2011, then maybe we'd still have the Tiki Room under new management today. Boy, I'm tired. I think I'll head over to the Hall of Presidents and take a nap. Thankfully, this classic Disney attraction was saved and continues to spread the Disney magic Walt envisioned every single day. Number 3 when Disney's Animal Kingdom opened in April of 1998, Dinosaur was an opening day attraction, but it was originally called Countdown to Extinction. With dark rides being a Disney staple, Countdown to Extinction was the only dark ride at the park on opening day, but it wasn't really marketed as a family-friendly experience. I mean, that's a pretty intense and terrifying adventure. Not the family-friendly tone you'd expect for a Disney dark ride. But there's sort of a reason for that. See, when Animal Kingdom was being built, it was severely over budget. So former CEO Michael Eisner needed Imagineers to cut costs. One of the ways to cut down costs was to use an existing ride system. This turned out to be the Enhanced Motion Ride Vehicle System from Indiana Jones Adventure at Disneyland. And they also reused the track layout. That's right, both rides share the exact same track layout. While the ride was in development, the film Dinosaur was already in production. So when designing characters for the ride, Disney knew this was the perfect opportunity to incorporate the dinosaur species from the film, mainly the Iguanodon and the Carnotaurus. They even incorporated Aladar the Iguanodon into the now-defunct Discovery Riverboat attraction. As the film made its way further into production, the pre-show originally showed this when referring to the Iguanodon, but then was replaced shortly after opening to an animated clip with Aladar from the film. The ride continued to terrify guests as Countdown to Extinction until May 1st, 2000, when Disney changed the name of the attraction to Dinosaur. Dinosaur, ride it. The name change happened two weeks before the film premiered, and it was the synergy Michael Eisner and Imagineers envisioned. Gone was the Styracosaurus, now replaced by Aladar, the Iguanodon, but when it came down to the physical ride, there weren't too many changes. Dinosaur was a family film, so Disney figured more children would want to ride Dinosaur. Imagineers toned down the motion of the ride vehicle and changed audio and lighting effects in an effort to make it less terrifying. But the story remained the same. You set off to rescue the Iguanodon, only to be chased by the Carnotaurus. Even though the ride today is a toned-down version of the original, 
It's still pretty terrifying, especially for the little ones. If you look at the ride vehicles today, you'll see they say CTX Rover, and the CTX is a leftover relic that refers to Countdown to Extinction. A lot of people forget the film Dinosaur is linked to the ride, since the film did not end up a classic like other Disney films. Either way, Dinosaur is still one of the must-do thrill rides at Walt Disney World. Number 2 The last of the attractions to debut during Magic Kingdom's 1994 refurbishment of Tomorrowland was Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. The attraction soft opened on December 16th, 1994, then closed just less than a month later since former CEO Michael Eisner thought it was too tame. Imagineers reworked the ride, then it officially opened on June 20th, 1995. Welcome, weary travelers, to the great big universe of XS. It was a joint venture between Disney and George Lucas, but it was unlike any other attraction at Magic Kingdom. What? Something's wrong. An alien being has been intercepted. Oh no, he's escaping! <laughs> Alien Encounter. The attraction was intense, dark, and took thrill at Walt Disney World to a whole new level. As you entered into XS Tech, you were greeted by an XS robot known as Sir, who demonstrated the company's teleportation technology using Skippy the Alien. Once you are in the main chamber, a terrifying alien appears in the teleportation tube, but then somehow escapes. The power goes out, and while you're sitting in complete darkness, the alien starts terrorizing everyone in the chamber. You could hear the alien shriek, feel it move around the room as the seats rumble and shake, and could even feel the alien's breath on your neck. Alien Encounter was so intense, there was even this warning at the front of the attraction. But that didn't stop guests from complaining. Since Alien Encounter was in the Magic Kingdom, many guests ignored the warning, thinking that it couldn't possibly be that scary. It would have been a much better fit in Disney MGM Studios at the time, and I bet the attraction would still be around today if that was the case. Well, after only eight years of operation, Alien Encounter proved to be too terrifying, and it closed for good on October 11th, 2003. Since the 2002 film Lilo and Stitch was such a hit, Disney announced that a new alien would be taking over the attraction. Stitch's Great Escape opened on November 16th, 2004, and reused many of the same mechanics and infrastructure from Alien Encounter, including the animatronics in the pre-show, as well as the theaters and teleportation tubes. You can see this already looks much more family-friendly than Alien Encounter. Now like Alien Encounter, the pre-show demonstrates the teleportation tubes. Then there's an alert that there's a level 3 prisoner, which turns out to be Stitch. Once inside the chamber, Stitch escapes, and again you found yourself in complete darkness. Only this time, there is a lot more comedy added. <laughs> this was definitely the family-friendly version of Alien Encounter, which now fit the overall mood of Magic Kingdom much better. But fans of Alien Encounter were disappointed with the change. When comparing Stitch's Great Escape to Alien Encounter, this was a massive downgrade. But one thing many people can agree on is that Imagineers did a fantastic job with the Stitch animatronic. It was one of the most complex figures at the time that moved with such fluidity and ease. Well, on January 6, 2018, Stitch's Great Escape closed and became a seasonal attraction that never opened again. It was a Stitch character meet and greet for a couple years, but in 2020, Disney officially announced that Stitch's Great Escape is closed for good. Now both attractions go down as defunct pieces of Walt Disney World history. Number 1 when Disney California Adventure opened in February of 2001, California Screamin' was an opening day attraction that could be found in Paradise Pier. Today we know this area as Pixar Pier, but over the last two decades, the land theme to a seaside amusement park has seen many changes. From 2007 until 2011, 
Paradise Pier went through a remodeling to make the area more Disney. But one of the only rides that remained untouched was the headliner attraction, California Screamin'. The roller coaster is the backdrop of the pier, and at the time when it was built, it was the second longest steel roller coaster in North America. California Screamin' quickly became one of the most popular thrill rides at Disneyland. I mean, who can resist the 55 mile per hour launch and that vertical loop? Now, Disney rides are usually all about the story, but California Screamin' was pretty much just your standard exposed coaster that played a soundtrack. But it always guaranteed a great time. Well, just six years after the previous revamp, it was announced in 2017 that Paradise Pier would become Pixar Pier, and California Screamin' would be transformed into the Incredicoaster. Oh, I like the Incredicoaster. Sure, slap our names on it. Oh, Quite normal, darling. Corporations call it synergy. The Incredicoaster opened on June 23, 2018, and even though the physical coaster track stayed the same, the ride was plussed, adding a fun storyline as well as brand new story elements. As you embark on your chase to find Jack Jack who's escaped, Disney built brand new enclosed scream tubes along the track, added new scenes at the beginning and end of the ride, as well as an incredible, no pun intended, soundtrack. Honestly, the soundtrack is what makes the Incredicoaster feel like you're on a high-speed adventure with a purpose. Not to mention you get to smell the sweet, sweet scent of chocolate chip cookies. Now, could things have been done differently to make the attraction even better? I mean, sure, they could have come up with a better solution for Jack-Jack on a stick, and the characters in the Scream Tubes could have been animatronics. But overall, the Incredicoaster is still that much better than California Screamin'. Incorporating IP took this typical amusement park coaster and turned it into a thrill ride with the Disney difference. So, what's your favorite Disney ride overlay from the list? Or maybe one that wasn't mentioned? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.